once again to all of you today we will be talking about financing decisions we finished our first unit first cluster which is completely introductory hmm? so in that session we have been learning many things and the majority of the questions from my students they are said i i practically couldn't understand the difference between uh, uh, profit maximization and wealth maximization as the objective okay so the coming units will explain you how wealth will be maximized as a with an objective hmm? and how profit maximization is completely different from wealth maximization so that will be understood in financing decisions that is financial leverage investment decisions and dividend decisions which is more of retained earnings we will be discussing about that these three are more important to understand how wealth gets maximized by a company by a cfo of a company so i think i already shared the ppt with you all uh, could you find it can you open for yourself yes sir yes sir okay fine so yes, sir. you all you all got my ppt my dear friends yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. yeah did yes. you open that yes, yes sir. sir good thank you thanks a lot now uh, may I know what is this ppt is all about capital structure capital, capital structure good good now in the same whatsapp group in our financial management group you have a course syllabus can all of you go to that and open the second unit please and if you have opened i want one of you to read it out sir what should i read sir second unit sir exactly turn your video on i'm pinning you yes sir yeah uh second unit is about leverage operating leverage and financial leverage impact of leverage on shareholder returns eps ebit analysis capital structure uh capital structure uh, and uh, factors affecting capital structure capital structure theories component of cost of capital measurement of weighted average cost of capital sir okay good so did you get all of you i think you already have this in your hands itself now please understand the ppt which i shared to you it is not bit by bit or piece by piece i integrated the whole thing it's all about leverage it is about impact of leverage on shareholders wealth it is about capital structure or combination or cap mix of capital it is about capital structure theories it talks about optimum capital structure and it tells you it throws you in different places in the way that when i ask the class what is the optimum capital structure there will be no single answer why because that depends on the degree of leverage that depends on the industry that depends on many other things now what i do is let me share the ppt with you all so that it will be common to all of us and look into it okay uh no this is a wrong ppt wait a moment you can access uh, uh, you all can access my uh, slide share account right there is no problem yes sir this yes no sir good this is what i wanted to show you okay before going into capital leverage as our friend read about uh, uh, second unit its components constituents or ingredients in second cluster or second unit then how would you define or know leverage what do you mean by leverage it's the financial risk sir okay financial risk agreed leverage is a risk leverage is a risk that we take for the projects sir hmm 
Agreed. Uh, leverage, uh, leverage is the thing that uh, to accomplish certain things which were not possible, sir. Like, okay. Agreed. Uh, okay, I put it the other way. Leverage, operating leverage, financial leverage. Have you heard about these three? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. True. Leverage, operating leverage, financial leverage. I'll tell you, leverage is a physical science word. Leverage is a physical science word. Agreed? You might have heard about leverage in physics when we are doing our schooling. No? Yes or no? No idea? Yes, sir. Oh, may, may I get the clue? What exactly is this? No? Anyone? You can, you can give a try. There's nothing wrong. Financial leverage. The financial leverage is the uh, amount which is taken a part of on the assets of the organizations to okay. maximize the profits. Okay. Finance, so financial leverage is a tool with which we can, which a financial manager can maximize the return of equity shareholders. So. Fine. Agreed. That's the point. That's the whole point. I want objective of this unit. Correct. Then. Fine. L let us talk about leverage in physics. Leverage is all about leveraging the efforts of using, uh, lifting an ob object with limited uh, uh, resources or energy available. For example, if someone cannot move the stone, a 50 kg or 100 kg stone with bare hands, with his or her own energy, then what they do? They use a crowbar, Gunupam, They use a crowbar and insert between the under the stone, which is between the stone and the ground, and they try to pull the pull up, pull up the stone. That is what you call it as leverage effect. Though you are using your own same energy, that leverage has given you extra space, extra uh, energy to move, extra force to move that stone. That's what you call it as leverage. Then operating leverage. Operating leverage is a company which is engaged in more of fixed assets. If you remember in our uh, break-even analysis, break-even analysis in business economics, we have discussed about CVP analysis. We discussed about contribution. There are many CVP is all about how much contribution I got because they want just variable cost and anything above it. That's the bothering point. They avoid fixed cost. Maybe fixed cost is already recovered and they're not bothered about fixed cost. So capital intensive industries like steel, cement, power sectors, they do have a lot of fixed cost. So fixed assets through fixed cost. So they have a lot of benefit in the long term, though they may not reach the break-even analysis in the short term. But beyond the break-even point, they have the profits booming up because of the fixed cost effect. That you call it as operational leverage or operating leverage. Then uh, financial leverage is the leverage where uh, one of our friends already said that it is the change in profits because of employing more of debt, employ more of borrowings, more of debt. It will increase your profits. Okay. 
how we will see that we will see that everything will be uh, uh, understood by my students this is what you called as financial leverage fine i i got i collected some uh, clippings uh, from some books you can see here yes so i just uh, uh, got some example here where you can see two companies company a company b okay company a has less fixed cost compared to company b can you see the screen all of you yes sir it is yes, sir. yeah uh, this is how it goes so variable cost is not a big factor here we are working on fixed cost per year so because of the reason fixed cost is more for technology company b and its contribution margin is also high you can see okay so this you call it as operating leverage because there are more of fixed costs fixed cost elements in this if the companies operate this way because of the reason they have operating leverage you will have business risk okay business risk is associated with those companies where fixed cost is of more when compared to variable cost did you get that that is operating leverage you can see the difference between company a and company b fixed cost is high for b fixed cost is less and for company a in the total cost it is more of variable cost the whole total cost curve you can see there is occupied by variable cost itself fixed cost contribution is very less then yeah this is uh, about operating profits why we are talking about uh, a business risk is the fixed assets company or companies with uh, more fixed assets they are very sensitive to future profits okay when expected profits are not met their value crashes the stock price crashes uh, crashes so you you can see it is more upward the angle of inclination upwards is very high uh, uh, of b compared to comp uh, company a uh, maybe uh, how to get uh, uh, operating leverage the formula is to what extent has uh, ebit has changed for a given change in sales the so change in ebit is a, is the outcome of change in sales it is more okay so there are different formulas i'm just uh, this is taught to you in your financial accounting i was just revising you to introduce financial leverage is fine good fine so okay. that is a small intro about uh, leverage operating leverage and financial leverage let us talk about financial leverage right now when you talk about financial leverage you should know what is capital structure what is capital and so on then uh, let us take again the help of the ppt let me share the screen now and let us go work with ppt yeah capital structure can you see the ppt all of you yes yes sir. yes good good yes, sir. so with that brief introduction let me introduce capital structure it is a mix of capital of a company in the form of debt and equity that itself says that there are only two forms of capital it is debt and equity so to what extent a company has debt and equity put together that we call it as capital structure it is a mix of debt and equity it is financing mix or capital mix of a firm instead of capital you can use the word word financing or funding also it means the same it is a statement of company's capital composition of debt and equity capital so why i am using the word statement here is may I know where do you get the capital of a company's information 
official website of the company sir where which statement i agree with you you are right it is available financial in any company website sorry financial statement yes. and all fine it is a financial statement but which financial statement you can see debt capital and equity capital that's my question what kind of financial statement tells you how much is the equity capital of a company how much is the debt capital of a company can anyone help us louder please yeah you're right louder balance. correct balance sheet so when i'm referring to a word called statement it is the balance sheet okay balance sheet of a company is all about assets and liabilities in liabilities you have long term liability short term liability in long term liabilities you have equity and debt so that's what i mean here the capital structure is shown in balance sheet of a company then a firm can have a zero debt means totally equity capital but you can't have a company with zero equity or 100% debt as the firm doesn't exist without owners or ownership and their equity capital did you understand this point yes yes sir yeah if you take some kind of software sir, companies like the... uh, yeah go on please so but what is the ideal composition of these two sir like I mean, we'll see how that. much percent we'll see that. yeah we'll see that i'll okay, tell you sir. what is an optimum mix capital mix what is an optimum capital structure we'll conclude okay sir yeah. thank you sir. yeah so uh, here you may find 100% equity companies like software companies like infosys or tcs and even mukesh mukesh ambani is thriving to make reliance industries as a zero debt company okay which means 100% equity but you don't you cannot find a company with 100% debt you may have 50% debt 60% 75 maybe to the worst possibility 90% debt kind of thing but some equity is there 1% 2% 5% 10% equity should be there when a company which is insolvent close to insolvency will have an equity some part of equity which means ownership capital is also there then to the extent a capital structure looks in a balance sheet or a financial statement as i mentioned in the third point it is the outcome of a cfo's decision to maximize the firm's value it should be low debt minimum debt 50% debt two thirds debt whatever it is the cfo's decision proposes to ceo and board of directors and they give the consent to implement it then what factors should be kept in mind if someone like cfo or finance manager or someone treasurer controller whoever works what are the factors that we have to consider they are to start with first of all if it is an existing company if it is a new company obviously we require capital if it is an existing company then the question comes do we require capital or not that's very important so if you if you are demanding ceo is demanding capital means ceo has some new projects in hand potential projects or profitable projects in hand that's the starting point fine if you have a project and if you have a capital need or requirement then what are the expected cash flows future cash flows right i already told you potential projects but to what extent they are potential the project manager or finance managers they will ask you to what extent they are potential then once these two are confirmed then they will work on okay we need say 200 crores for this new, uh, two new projects how do we get this should we go through debt or should we go with equity 
so that depends on various factors further like cost of capital degree of leverage means to what extent you already funded with the debt is degree of leverage cost of capital means if you are borrowing to what extent the banks financial institutions or subsidized loans will charge you through interest rates or if it is with the equity capital what is the current return on equity what is the required rate of return or discounting factor for shareholders or owners of the firm okay these first four are technical to finance guy then later on some general or firm specific economy specific factors they also play a major role like nature of business is it uh, manufacturing is it trading is it investment company is it a service company service company like uh, banking telecom stock broking financial services or healthcare services or technical services it services anything based on the nature of the the business the degree of complexity of borrowing will vary there was a boom in nine late 90s early 90s 2000 and now also all technology companies attract new capital startups attract new capital because they are technology oriented if a new capital intensive project like a uh, power project new uh, gmr gmr kind of branch may get uh, funding but a new company has got a, a project to build visakhapatnam international airport then funding will be a big question a big problem because he is new and it, it is very capital intensive the uh, flotation cost cost of borrowing it is not that easy importantly when companies go for public issues like uh, uh, issue of bonds debentures which are debt and equity issues you need to pay for underwriters merchant bankers registrars depositories and so on that cost should also be kept in your mind if at all your uh, public issue is a failure who will bear those costs that is also a cost that's also important factor then size of the company when your companies like uh, uh, reliance industries or uh, uh, brands like birla reliance bajaj tata i think these are big brands in india the adani ambani uh, these people uh, doesn't have big problem in raising capital but small companies they do always have a uh, problem it means they don't have a choice if you can't borrow you have to go for own equity if you don't have equity you should go only for borrowing it is not based on capital required future cash flows or cost of capital or degree of leverage those things doesn't play any role because your company size is like this you have to then desire to control control what we discussed about this you remember Con control ownership and control in the previous session my dear friends anyone of you remember ownership and control in the previous session only saturday session anyone control of what control of assets there was a picture assets liability managers debt suppliers equity shareholders you remember can you hear me guys yes sir can you recall that could you recall agency problem when we are talking about agency problem we discussed about control of assets could you recall anyone no one should i share that or can you recall quickly okay i will do that for you i gave you a picture where uh, uh, do you have that uh, in our group yeah let me show you that 
I think in, in this only we have seen this, if I'm not wrong. Let me check. That was the last one. Yeah. yeah. Do you recall this? Now, yes, sir. Now, oh, now yes. <laughs> okay. The whole picture is in front of you. Fine. So, this picture clearly says if there are no debt holders, who has complete control of the assets? Equity shareholders. Absolutely, equity shareholders. Of course, if there is an agency problem, the managers are so strong and they influence board of directors, that's a different story. But if debt suppliers are also there, okay, then you will be losing some control to debt suppliers, debt holders. Okay. Not only that, one more thing is, okay, let me go through this again. Okay. I was giving you this point, desire to control factors influencing capital structure. It gives the picture the other way. If you don't want to lose the ownership to others, you will go for borrowing. Okay. If you are ready to give the lose the ownership to others, then you try to invite more, more and more equity shareholders, more and more owners. So that's how you want to go for equity or debt also explained here. Then taxes, if your objective is to cut down the taxes, save on interest because interest is not a taxable thing, you can uh, claim for deduction. Okay. EBIT minus interest becomes EBT. Then on EBT tax will be levied. That is the advantage. If you are looking for that, any company will love to go with uh, uh, borrowings than equity. Then tax, taxes, I told you. Then industry influence, there will be a different culture. Like I told you, software companies, they don't have a habit of borrowing because they don't have projects. It does not mean they need not borrow. They can borrow. But as everyone is not borrowing, you don't find a software company going for huge borrowing. The same way, uh, construction companies, infrastructure development companies, they always have huge debt. They always have the debt equity ratio at a high level. So analysts and any, anyone valuing these companies, they try to value, they, they don't uh, uh, find this as a huge financial risk. Why? Because every infrastructure development or construction company is having a debt equity ratio of 50% or more. So they don't mind for that. But if a software company is having that kind of a ratio, that is a financial risk. Here it is not that. So that kind of industry practices, industry averages, industry benchmarks are also considered. Then if you want to go for some debt instruments and uh, there is no one to rate your securities, bonds or debentures at uh, uh, A or AA or A, A plus, whatever, then you are restricted to go for debt, then find your own money through equity or something. That, that kind of problems will also come. Then market timing, lower debt, when the interest rates are falling, every company loves to borrow. You go for loans, issue bonds, issue debentures, issue any debt product when interest rates are low or falling. In the times of equity booming, where pricing is very high, now also, if anyone is interested in IPOs, you can try for that. I'm not asking you to invest. You try for the IPO where there are Mac, uh, where there is an issue which is oversubscribed 10 times, 20 times or something like that, definitely on listing, you will get a better price. If you want to hold, you can hold even if you want to exit, if you can. Okay, that's what you call it as market timing. Then uh, I, I think uh, uh, you are able to understand, right? Is it, it, is, is it, is it clear till here? I just introduced capital. Yes, sir. You know capital, debt capital, equity capital. You understood 
through the definitions what is a capital structure which is seen in a uh, balance sheet of a company then major factors my dear students don't get uh, uh, deceived these are the only factors that influence capital structure decisions there are many i listed out major factors okay then to know the capital structure to what extent what is the capital mix and what is the capital structure of a company you have some important ratios here some of them are given to you in the financial accounting sessions also but still we have that we have repeated working on this we'll be doing some problems also using real balance sheets okay so i have given you nine ratios here one is debt equity ratio this is more popular total debt capital of a company divided by total equity capital so what will be the answer for a company with zero debt debt equity ratio will be zero sir zero very good say for a company debt capital is 1 crore equity capital is also 1 crore what is the answer debt capital is 1 crore equity capital is also 1 crore what is the answer debt equity ratio 1 is to 1 sir answer one, is 1 is to 1 1 is to 1 okay so then debt to total capital ratio it is other way of understanding debt capital divided by debt capital plus equity capital or total capital okay can you tell me what is the debt to total capital ratio for a company where debt capital is 1 crore equity capital is also 1 crore can you tell me the answer please according to the formula given to you on the screen so once can you repeat the formula so yeah it is there on the screen can you see the screen yes sir yes sir yeah debt to capital ratio please find out for a company where debt capital is 1 crore equity capital is also 1 crore what is the answer 1 is to 2 sir what is the answer first 1 crore divided by 2 crores 0.5 which means 0.5 is to 1 or 1 is to 0.5 which way you take debt capital is 0.5 total capital is 1 in that way 0.5 is to 1 that is the ratio the answer is 0.5 then debt to total assets ratio debt capital divided by total assets you will get total assets where do you find assets of a company again in balance sheet sir Very good. instead of balance sheet sir good good so total liabilities total assets you will have that okay so uh, total debt capital divided by total assets of a company on the balance sheet will give you the answer then interest coverage ratio okay it is also known as tai times interest earned the formula is ebit divided by interest paid operating profit or earnings before interest and tax divided by how much was the interest paid on total loans taken total debentures issued total bonds issued by this company for the current financial year that is what you called as interest paid so ebit or operating profit divided by interest paid will give you tai or icr okay we'll be doing the problems don't worry i'm just introducing everything to you in the first session okay then financial leverage it is operating profit by ebt it is the ratio of ebit by ebit minus interest so that is where the interest component leverage financial leverage is seen through interest assume there is no interest paid for the company what is the financial leverage for this company zero sir uh actually nothing there is no financial leverage we can say okay 
I will make you understand the more practical examples in the coming sessions. Then degree of financial leverage is the, the percentage change in EBIT when compared to percentage change in EBT. To what extent per one unit of change in EBT, what is the change in EBIT? So it should be more than one. That is the idea. Okay. If you are effectively uh, using the borrowed funds and if you have the financial leverage, then return on capital invested. It is, it measures to what extent you got the returns. This is what the investors look at. Okay. Total capital means what? Equity plus debt. Very good. Debt capital plus equity capital or total equity capital plus total debt capital. If there is no debt for the company, it is only equity capital. So net operating profit divided by total capital. I will tell you what is net operating profit, which is a, uh, which will be will be working on tax also. Then basic earnings power is all about testing your assets return or return on assets. The formula is EPIT divided by total assets. Then return on equity. This is what every equity shareholder or every investor in the company looks at. The formula is earnings after tax or profits after tax, eat or pat divided by total equity capital. Okay. So these are the ratios uh, that you have to uh, know about uh, uh, financial leverage. Okay. Uh, okay. My video is off. Okay. So why am I going to whiteboard? So till now, are you clear, my dear friends? Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, make a point that make a point that these things are very clear to you all because without these basics, you cannot practically understand concepts anywhere you can get it. You just open any book. I have a series of books. Most of them are corporate finance made available for you. You check uh, any author, any publisher, you'll get the concepts. You go to Wikipedia, you go to YouTube channels, you check my own channel, you ask me, fine. But practically, the learning happens when you apply these uh, practical things into your mind the, to the re real time scenario. That's the reason. Pick up, you stick. I think you all please pick up your own company. You already picked up your company, your CFO and CEO. Now, the time has come, all of you for. Friday's session, please select three companies of your choice. As one of your friends said, if you want balance sheet of a company, you will get them in their respective company's website. If not, you can go to NSE, you can go to BSE's website, you can go to RBA's website, you can go to Money Control. There are many sources. But I suggest you to go to company's website. If not, there are many other sources. So what I want you to do is identify three companies. Anyone of you have right now your own companies, three companies in your mind? Quickly. Anyone? Yes, sir. Deloitte and Capital IQ and Wipro. Yeah, uh, this, this is what I had been telling you. Please prefer Indian companies so that it is easy to understand. Okay, financial years, financial statements in uh, Indian scenario, they'll be very easy. Okay, Wipro is fine. Can you say to other, maybe your favorite is a uh, uh, KPO companies or ITES, if I'm not wrong. In ITES, pick up software companies, pick up three. Can you? TCS. Uh, sorry? Tata, Tata. I can't Tata. choose. One of you, one of you. Tata Group, sir. Tata Group is very gentle. What are they in Tata Group? Okay, Tata Consultancy Services, sir. 
TCS is one. Then Tata Steel. Tata Steel, fine. Tata Motors. Tata Motors. You're right. So now, like uh, your friend said, you have to identify your own favorite three companies. Any one of you have in in your mind right now? Anyone? Just uh, you try it out. Anything is easy. Manikumar. Sir. Yeah. Uh, your company? Ashoka Leyland, sir. One. Hyundai. Hyundai Motors. Avoid Hyundai. Pick up Indian companies. Emphasis, sir. Ashoka Leyland is automobile. Emphasis is software. Good diversification. Good. And next. Uh, Concentrics. Concentrics. Good. So Mani Kumar got three, and uh, we got only two. Anyone else would like to try? Sir, uh, HUL, sir, Hindustan Union. Uh, sorry. HUL, sir. HUL. Only one. We can't see Infosys, you. Infosys, sir. Uh, Infosys. What? HUL, we can't hear you. Unmute. Infosys, sir. Uh, HUL, Infosys. Then, and third one is HDFC, sir. HDFC Bank. Okay. Yes. So three. Sir. Very, very good. So now I got three students with three different companies. So my dear friends, three of you, if I ask you to get the balance sheet of these companies, where do you get it from? What is the source? How do you get them? Sir, through company websites. That's it. You can go to company's website itself or as other sources I told you. So what you have to do is all of you, I will ask you in the next session, you please pick up three companies. Okay, why I'm saying Indian companies because you will have April to March financial year and other things which are not confusing. That's the reason. Okay, there is no reservation or some other criteria. There is no bias. Okay, please pick them up. It's three. You can pick up more than three also. And once you look at the balance sheet, you will also have historic balance sheets of the company. So as of now, you will have the balance sheet for 2020-21 financial year. Okay, latest. Then you will also have balance sheet for 2019-20 and 2018-19. So minimum three years, you please try to find out and be ready. We'll discuss in the next session. So till today, till now, in capital structure or second unit, but from today's session, any questions? You can ask me, please. So just we should write the balance sheet from the company's official website, sir. You take a screenshot or you can save in the WhatsApp group because writing is very difficult. Am I right? Okay, sir. Okay. Fine. That will be you, easy. Yeah, or else you can keep them ready with you. You can share to the class. We'll go through those uh, okay, information. Sir. It's up to you. Screenshots, sharing the link, anything will do, no problem at all. Okay? Fine? Okay, sir. So, okay, sir. Is there any other question? Okay. Sir, for every there... company, we should analyze three years, sir. Exactly. Don't analyze. You need not analyze. I will teach you how to analyze. Okay, sir. Three consequent okay. years of a Exactly. Okay, three companies, sir, three years. If you are interested in doing more than three, like four, five, or six, or seven times after you, get because why I'm saying three is different company. And importantly, instead of one industry, like Manikumar, I think he completely diversified. What is your choice? Ashok Leyland, Emphasis, 
HDFC bank right mani kumar concentrix concentrix okay so he diversified am i right no yes sir yeah if you have a diversified companies you will understand how the balance sheets are different and one of you you have chosen all from uh, one company that is software and ids who was that deepika sir shanti yeah, sir yeah deepika right vipro what are the other tcs two? tcs vipro t infosys infosys so all are three so deepika is uh, looking into balance sheets of all three software companies one side and manikumar is looking into three different companies three different industries that will give us a better picture on capital structure are they the same are they the different we will have uh, loads of takeaways in the next session okay any other question still okay then if there is no question we will continue in the next session come back to the session join us on friday 145 with your respective companies balance sheets all of you thank you all the best